So chi-squared test is something that is um, able to check the goodness of fit, also check the homogeneity, um, or, and also check the independence. So in all of these things, um, chi-squared test is very useful. Um, and you should have learned this in STAT 400 and 500. So this is a prerequisite material. All right, that's, that's the one. Uh, go with the answer that, that is preferred by most. So this is the correct answer. All right, so for this particular week, um, this lecture is probably the easiest lecture you have ever heard from me. Uh, because all of the concepts that I'm going to cover in this week, you are somewhat familiar with most of these concepts. So this is mainly going to be a review type of class where I review some of the things that I have already explained or maybe was part of your concept reading or pre-reading or your um, assignments. So this is the general textbook that I use. Part of the reason I use this because this is freely available online. And in this particular slide, similar to the previous one, uh, whenever I refer some, some page number, that page number is always from this particular textbook. All right. So in the first class, we have discussed the difference between the model-based um, statistical inference versus the design-based estimate, where the model-based estimates are more about um, whenever you have a, an infinite population and then how do you really um, do inference using that kind of um, uh, situation. Uh, so essentially whatever you have learned so far in the SP page 400 and 500 are within this model-based concept. Versus now in this particular course, we are dealing with design-based um, strategy where we have a particular population um, and that population can be large but it is fixed and finite and we are trying to get um, some design based inference that means from that non-infinite population um, where the even though the probability of a sample getting selected is um, unequal um, but we can still make the inference because we, we at least know what are those probabilities. And um, based on some of the designs that we use in this design-based analysis, say for example, the stratification and the uh, clustering, um, we, can, um, we can get some dependent sampling and that hampers our main assumption that we used for our model-based estimate. And the main assumption is that the samples are supposed to be independent, which is generally not the case when we are dealing with this design-based strategy. Right? Okay. Um, and, and this slides, uh, slide is generally um, saying the same um, content that I was explaining in the previous slide. So there are many different examples of the survey data analysis where um, in the Canadian context, you have CCHS, in the US context, you have enhanced BRFSS. Um, there is a Korean version, uh, it's called K-enhanced. There are some other versions, um, some European version, ESS and things like that. So all of these survey data are supposed to be available um, for you in some form or another. And for this particular course, I generally give support for CCHS and enhance. But for other surveys, um, as long as the design is, is not very different, should not be very different. I just want to point out, and this came to my attention based on one of the students' uh, project, is that, um, say for example, sometime these, uh, they say for example, Statistics Canada, uh, also puts out some data from surveys, but those surveys are non-random sampling often. And in that case, you do not have this type of issue that you have to deal with weights, uh, strata, or stratification, because those are essentially uh, non-probability samples. All right, so this is the enhanced example, and this 2007-8 data I have explained before in one of the previous labs. 
um, and we generally use um, multi-stage sample, which is not really a simple random sampling, and we use clustering and stratification to incorporate um, not only the convenience, but also the statistical um, properties that we want to incorporate in our estimates. So generally speaking, um, and this is a general misconception, some people think that stratification is a complex survey, which is not. Stratification is more complex than SRS, but when we particularly talk about complex surveys, we generally talk about some mixture of this clustering, stratification, and weighting, right? And if that is happening, we call them complex survey. And in a previous class, I have already explained some of the steps that we that were taken to collect the data set. So the data set is collected in four different steps. And in the first step, we, we first have the counties as the PSU or the primary sampling unit. And then we, we assign strata based on the demographic information. Uh, so, so look at the distinction here. So the PSUs were assigned based on geographical location mostly. And the strata was based on some particular characteristic. It could be a demographic characteristic or it could be a characteristic that is associated with the type of um, city block or a, uh, a rural block. When this first stage is done, it is done in a way that um, that is nested, and that is going to be useful for us later as well. That the counties are randomly selected using the uh, PPS, um, where we are selecting in such a way that two stratum part design are being selected. And that means what you have a strata, and from from that particular strata, you are choosing two different clusters, and that is happening for all of these strata. So that is what, how you choose the first step, and then you go on to the second step, third step, fourth step, and so on to collect your samples in a multi-stage way. Um, and as explained earlier, even though we are not getting uh, equal probability, it is still a probabilistic sampling. We exactly know what is the probability of each person being selected. And we not only that, we also know what is the probability of a pair getting selected in the sample. So we can exactly calculate that. And that would be helpful for some of the calculations that we do. And one thing to notice here is that the sample that is collected in these national surveys, they are designed in such a way that uh, those samples are not supposed to be representative and that is purposefully done so that some of the population that are underrepresented uh, we can get some reasonable estimate from those population and that's why we do oversampling and since we are using clustering as a way to collect the samples the samples can be dependent so the independence goes out of the window when we are doing this kind of sampling. Um, and what is the price of not having independence anymore? So the beta coefficient, key values, the confidence interval, and uh, standard errors are not going to be useful anymore if you are going to use the regular um, methods of doing the data analysis that you have learned in your SPPH 400, say, for example. All right, and you already know what a weight is and what a weight represents. Um, the weight is basically the number of people in the target population that is represented by the sample person that was selected in the, um, say for example, in this case, enhanced sample. And one of the nice feature of enhance is that it gives you the weights, a pseudo version of the strata, a pseudo version of the primary sampling unit. They call it pseudo because this is not the exact strata. They sometimes aggregate and mix and merge because they do not want to give away um, the, the option to for anyone to identify any participant who participated in the sample. And one of the things you will notice 
is that in the CPHS data set, they give you geographical information, which from which province you are coming from, right? But in the enhanced data set, you will see the geographical information is purposefully avoided so that you cannot identify from which particular state a person is coming from. And that is, those information can be proxied by the stratum and PSU information if you have the exact information. And that is why these, these information are somewhat masked so that you are not able to, as an analyst, not able to identify exactly from which city this person is coming. Say, for example, if there was a particular city where there was one patient who was a, say for example, had cancer and diabetes both, say for example. And based on that information, you could identify um, the city, right? So that is, that is one of the reasons why they do this kind of anonymity for you to, as an analyst, to prevent identifying a patient. But they at least, enhanced at least gives you these stratum and PSU type of information. But they, in the CCHS dataset, they do not even give you this type of information. And we will see the implication of that later in this lecture. If you have a continuous variable, um, then if you do the categorization of, the, of that variable, and they're essentially losing the power. So why do we do that? Say, for example, for, for this age um, in years at screening, uh, it is giving all of the ages in continuous. So if someone is 12 years old, it will exactly say 12. If someone is 64 years old, it will say exactly 64. But if someone is 83 years old, it would say just 80. Uh, and if you are using this data and using this data as a continuous variable, that makes it a problem because this, this 80 is not a number anymore. This is a code now. Uh, so for this kind of data, if you are restricting your data set from zero to 79, then this is a continuous variable. There is no question about it. But if you are trying to include some of the patients who are 80 or plus, then you have to make some sort of compromise and do some sort of categorization for this. And even in CCHS, they have this problem because of this identifying problem. If someone's age is 110, probably there is one person 110 and they, <laughs> that will be identifying information. So they do not give you that information for that reason. All right, so there are two different estimates that can be of interest, and there is nothing wrong with choosing either. You can either make your estimate about the population, because if you have the weights and all of the other information, you can make the connection between your sample and the population. And in the sample side, if you simply use your um, some of the information that are in the sample, that is also okay to get the sample treatment effect or the sample effect of the exposure. So based on your interest, so you have to be very careful about defining your uh, high court or even the aim of your study from the beginning. What is really your aim? Is your aim making the, uh, the estimate about the whole US population or whole Canadian population? Or is it your aim to make inference about only this population that you have in the sample? So for example, in 2007, eight, there was how many? 10,000 samples. And you can make an estimate in that same uh, 10,000. And you can say the mean income was X. There is nothing wrong with that. But you have to be honest about what you are doing. Think of a scenario like this that the exposure is rheumatoid arthritis and the outcome is myocardial infarction or in general term, I know this as heart attack, right? And I run a regression where I have this myocardial infarction as my outcome, rheumatoid arthritis as my exposure, and I do have some covariates. And from that regression, uh, if our outcome is binary, we get the odds ratio of 1.54, right? And we do not use any weight or cluster or strata in 
when we are fitting this model. We are just running a regular logistic regression model. Right, and, and then we can try to interpret that R3 here and things like that. Uh, when, when you are, say for example, not using any weight, you are trying to make a comment about the sample that you have collected, right? So you can obviously say, based on the people who were surveyed in Enhanced 2007-8, this is my odds ratio. But if you say, you got this 1.54 odds ratio, that means that in the US population, your odds ratio is correct. That would be a wrong statement to make here because you did not connect your sample to the population using the weights. One of the concepts that we have learned earlier is about the design effect, right? In the design effect, this is simply, what is the variance that you are getting out of your current design, whatever complex design you are using. It could be a mixture of stratification, clustering and weighting versus what would be the, um, Variance or strength, uh, variance if you had uh, done the sampling using SRS. And this is basically the ratio of these two variances. And design effect, so if this design effect true, that implies that the variance from complex survey is twice as large as we would expect from SRS. Um, that means that if we used complex survey instead of SRS, we would have to use twice the sample size. So there is the implication of that. Whenever there is a design effect um, of say, for example, two, um, then we, we need to take into consideration of how this would affect um, our, our variance. And, and that is some important consideration because Stratification is something that, that generally decreases the uh, standard error. And, and if, you, if you still use the, some of the methods to calculate your standard errors and p-values, you will generally get the p-values to be very high. The uh, confidence interval will be too wide. Essentially, your, um, essentially, this would be something that is wrong. And on the other hand, when you are using the clustering and weighting, that has the opposite effect. Um, so having this kind of understanding is very useful to know that if you are using the regular estimates of standard error, when you are calculating, say, for example, the standard error of your mean or standard error of your regression coefficient or standard error of your slope, then generally speaking, you will see that um, the p-values and confidence intervals are going to be uh, different. So this slide is essentially describing that the standard approaches of calculating the standard error is assuming the SRS and consequently your p-values and confidence interval get distorted. And the direction of that will be clear when you take into consideration of the stat uh, stratification and clustering and weighting. Um, so stratification um, is something that requires to calculate the standard error uh, separately in each stratum and then combine. Clustering has a different problem. Clustering, remember in the enhance, we, we were working with a nested situation where we have a strata and based on that strata, from each strata, we were getting two clusters from each strata. So there, the situation were nested. So there was first this uh, strata and then this uh, clustering. And then there was to even complexify the problem, you have this weighting problem where you have unequal probability and non-response problem and all of this. So everything here is saying us that whatever SRS you are calculating using your regular estimates, using some of the things you have learned in your 400, is not going to be useful anymore. So what is the solution then? Okay, we, we have been hearing this is a problem, this is a problem, but what is the solution? The solution is, the first solution that you can use is the Taylor series approximation, where you need the information of strata and you need the information of your cluster. Without that information, you cannot calculate this Taylor series approximation properly, right? And Actually, you need complete information of those. You cannot just have partial information. You need 
how many strata you need how many cluster whether they were nested or not all of that information to calculate your taylor series approximation to get the correct variance that takes into account of these uh, non independent samples with unequal probability right so this is the solution that taylor series approximation but this is not the only solution sometime you will see other than the strata and cluster they do not give you the information about the strata and cluster but they give you something else they give you multiple version of weights so remember in the in the cchs or enhance you have one weight one strata one cluster sorry in the enhanced version right and in the cchs version you have just one weight nothing else right uh, but if you access the ma uh, master version of the cchs and that would require you to get some approval from the rdc and the statistics canada to get that master information but this is possible to get then they will give you replicated weights they will not give you strata and cluster but they will give you replicated weights that means there will be multiple version of those weights and those weights will be helpful for you to calculate the other versions of variance uh, so this is jackknife this is uh, phase um, balanced replicated design i think and this this is a bootstrap and one thing to remember here is that just because they have this name bootstrap here people sometimes think that this is the bootstrap that you have learned in the previous class and that is entirely wrong this is something else um and um you will see in some of the papers that they kind of mix up these things they say that oh we did bootstrap and bootstrap is a correct way of estimating our uh, variance so whatever we are getting is right so this bootstrap is very different than whatever bootstrap we have learned in the previous class all right having said that so these are different versions of the um, of the estimate where you can see this is an estimate that was calculated under the assumption of srs this was an estimate that was calculated under this uh, weighted version of this brr uh, weighted version of this GRR. Um, this is the Taylor series approximation, and these are other approximations. One thing to notice here is that see what is happening under SRS. This SRS estimate, the uh, variance estimate, is very different compared to this one. But all of these estimates, so all of these estimates are the proposed estimates that we are discussing in this particular slide. And all of these estimates are very close, right? So it almost does not make much of a difference which method you are using to variance calculate, as long as using, as long as you are using some of those, any of these uh, variance calculation methods that can properly accommodate either strata and cluster information or the replicated weights. Either is fine. See, all of these estimates are 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 not very different than each other. 0 0.067 and 0 0.064, not very different, but that is very different compared to 0 0.028, right? So my recommendation is to go with the Taylor series approximation if that is possible. And generally, most of the software packages can uh, deal with this approach. And there are other approaches like replicated design that are also possible to use. And in your reference, just take a look at this page to get a bit more understanding about this variance calculation. All right, so why is it that we are so interested in this variance? Isn't it that we are interested about the point estimate? So why we're just getting bogged down by this variance calculation that is so hard and complicated and things like that? That is because we not only are interested about point estimate, but we are also interested about making some inference about that point estimate. Hypothesis testing is related to the standard error calculation that you do, right? So because the p-value that you calculate is based on the standard errors that you calculate. So if your standard error is wrong, your p-value would be wrong, your hypothesis testing 
conclusion would be wrong. And also, we will see later that some of the goodness of fit tests also gets impacted by this. So this, um, all of the things that you have learned in the previous class, the student T test, high squared test, and the F test, and the, chi the likelihood ratio of high squared test goes out of the window as soon as you start working with the complex survey data, right? But fear not, uh, all of the design-based tests are already developed because as soon as you replace your SRS standard error calculation by this Taylor series approximation calculations standard error, all of your estimates are fixed. And there is also additional consideration about degrees of freedom and things like that. But for the purposes of this class, design-based t-test, design-based chi-square, design-based f-square, design-based world test, and some of the approximation of the likelihood ratio test, those are all available, right? And what do I mean by available? I mean that those values are uh, those things can be calculated in many different software packages. So even if you are using R, you can see most of the things are doable in R. Most of the things are doable in other softwares as well. It does not really matter which software you are using. And obviously, if there is a functionality that is not available, you can produce that function and you can upload that uh, in the CRAN and that will be then available to everyone, right? All right, so one tiny point I just want to make here is that there are two version of the chi-square test. One is called the um, rao squared test and another is called the thomas Rao test. And if you go to the lab materials for this week, I explicitly give you some explanations of how to get the rao squared and thomas Rao. Both are approximating the chi-square, but in, in under different assumptions. Uh, but it's essentially giving you a very similar result. All right, so for chi-square, there are two versions. This F is the Thomas Rao version, and this chi-square is the Rao squared version. You can use that. Remember in the linear regression, we were using um, R square. In the logistic regression, we were using some sort of pseudo R square. Those versions are also available uh, under different names um, for the survey uh, weighted um, analysis as well. And we are going to use these statistics um, again and again in this class. And remember, there was this hosmer lemisho test. And that hosmer lemisho test is suitable for under SRS when you are cal calculating your sample, but for the design based, uh, we have a archer lemisho goodness of fit test. And in the lab that you do in this week, you will see how to get all of these uh, test statistics used in your data set to get the results. And here are all of the references that I'm referring from the textbook. All right. So in terms of generalizability, just to give you one example, why it is important to use design-based approach. So think of a scenario where you have regression parameters, say for example, for gender, male and female, and you have under the unweighted or the under SRS, say for example, you have the p-value that is significant. And then when you use the design-based approach, look at the p-value, this is not significant anymore. So based on your use of the weights in your analysis, it, is, it can change even your conclusion. So it is very important that you take this seriously when you are doing any kind of calculation um, and try to make your interpretation in that way. Right, okay. So. There are some, um, these interview words, PSU and strata information in your target for, uh, in the enhance. So if you are trying to make your inference, you have to use the interview weights uh, to get the correct point estimate. And you have to use the PSU and strata information 
to get the correct standard error, right? So there is a distinction because the weights are the one that connects your sample to the population. And this strata or cluster and the stratification information is the one that is helpful for calculating your tailored series approximation of the variance calculation, and that will correct your standard error. So what does that mean? If you have, uh, if you are making your inference about the study sample, then the interview words should not be used. If you are making your inference about the population, only then these interview words should be used. And this PSU and strata information are helpful for calculating the standard error, no matter whether you are doing it for the sample or population. So you will need this information or alternatively, as I have explained earlier, the bootstrap weights either would work to calculate your correct standard error. So just to summarize, say for example, this or OR estimate you got when you used weights, cluster and strata. Who is the target population then? The US population. And the standard, the confidence interval is correct because you have included the strata and cluster. In here, you only use the strata and cluster option, but you did not include the weights. What does it interpret to? Only the sample. And the, stand, the confidence interval is correct because you are using the strata and cluster option. This is using nothing. Assuming SRS, so the point estimate is still associated with your sample, but the confidence interval you are getting is misleading. Why? Because the variance estimate was not done properly without the strata and cluster information. All right, just to give you one example of what is being done in the literature. So this is a study from uh, Korean Enhance, and they have done a systematic review of how many people uses the strata, cluster, and weight information properly, right? See? Uh, even though they were using survey data, the Korean, Korean Enhance, right? 80% uh, of them were not using any design-based statistic, 80%. And 19 or 20% of them were using the correct design-based analysis. Uh, so I think whenever you see some journal article, there is always room for some skepticism. And as a scientist, when you are reading a journal, especially as a methodologist, when I read a journal, I I try to look at their method section first before I read or try to understand any interpretation they are making. Um, because not everybody really knows what they're doing, but they essentially get away and publish more of the stuff, right? Even though you are making a argument about the sample, you still need to use the stratum uh, cluster information to get the correct standard error. Otherwise, nothing is working. Design effect is something that is helpful as an approximation. Say, for example, when you are calculating the design effect, you are calculating the design effect for a particular statistic. You are If you are calculating design effect for a mean, you are calculating the design effect for that mean. That does not apply the design effect for the intercept, right? And that does not apply for the design effect for the uh, slopes that you are getting, right? So design effect is specific to a statistic. So even though a design effect is given in particular survey for some statistic, that might not be relevant for the design statistic that you need for the particular statistic you are using in your particular data. And that, that, is, that is an issue, all right? So what are the survey weights? Are they useless all the time? No, 
they are I, I just explained that they are useful to connect from your sample to the population. So they are useful, but are they irreplaceable? No. Uh, it is possible to get the same information in different ways as well. And I will try to explain that in the next slide. Is it problematic? Yes, any type of weight-based analysis is most of the time problematic. Oh, someone is changing result. Okay, <laughs> and and useful only if interested in population. Yes, of course this is correct. But um, there are other ways to calculate the weights as well. One of the point I just want to make quickly is that sometimes you will see some of the quizzes that I'm giving here. It might feel like a trick question because there is no one answer to these quizzes. But in reality, you will see, the more you learn about something, you will see this is often the case that there is no real answer, the, the, a concrete answer to one particular question, because there are many ways to solve the same problem. All right, so even though weights are helpful, as I have explained earlier, uh, they are, there are some arguments about not using weights particularly when you are using weights in the context of your regression because they sometimes inflate your standard error, loses efficiency, weights. There are some software packages that might not be able to handle weights, but I think this is from a very old textbook. <laughs> Nowadays, almost every software can somehow handle weights, almost, I would say. Uh, so the general recommendation I would give is um, to check both results for the sample and the population and then try to see whether the results are wildly different or not. And by wildly, what do I mean? Is your confidence interval weight is blown up to the extent that it is from 0.001 to 10,000. Then it's kind of unusable. It, it doesn't mean anything. Right? Then you have to make, oh, then I cannot make an inference about population, let's make an inference about sample. Whether your results are completely distorted or not, if not distorted, I would suggest you to go with the population because the survey, surveys are done to get information about the population. All right, so we have dealt with the issue of uh, weight. What about the strata and cluster? If you, there, there are some arguments about using weights or not, that is fine. But <laughs> there is no excuse of not using strata and cluster information, right? Oh, one other point I just mm, forgot to mention in here is that, so I mentioned that there are some alternatives to using weights. What are those alternatives? So as you know, from one of the previous classes that there are many components of weight, right? Unequal probability, non-response, and also some people are overrepresented and some people are underrepresented, right? If in your regression, you use all of those individual component, there might not be any need to include the weights directly in your regression. If you have those informations available, right? But in a practical context, those informations are not usually available in the public access data set. So weights are the best chances that we have to connect our sample to the population. All right. And this is the most important point I just want to make is that whenever you are using survey weight and the weights are already calculated based on the entire sample. And then if you say, oh, I am just interested about pregnant women, so male population is not of any concern to me. And you just truncate or chop off the male population from your analytic sample. And that will distort the weights that you have because to remember to calculate the Taylor series, you need the number of strata and the number of cluster. Those are important information. But when you are chopping off half of your population, then the number of strata and the number of uh, clusters will be now computed very differently. And the standard error that you will get 
will be a different standard error compared to the original population uh, that we have seen uh, or, or the original population that you uh, were intended to intending to um, connect to so in the uh, if you go to the lab material you will see there is a particular lab that talks about how to deal with this particular scenario um, and uh, if you have any question about that particular lab component feel free to ask the questions in the wall of confusion or come to the office hours and i can try to explain more are the weights used for handling missing data too um, no actually not so if if there are these are the weights that are provided um, the weights that are provided in the survey data those have a very specific purpose so there are some other inverse probability of weighting technique that can be used for dealing with your missing data scenario but that has nothing to do with the sample weight or the interview weight that you are getting here my understanding is that the point estimate does not get impacted by the strata and cluster information. Uh, the point estimate is impacted by your weights, uh, not specific. The point is the standard error calculation gets impacted by your strata and clus uh, clustering information. One of the things um, that is important to recognize is that, say, for example, uh, when you are creating your data set, uh, the SAP assignment, right? You, you calculated some sort of analytic data, right? And in that analytic data, you, you may have subsetted your data set because some of the data set was not relevant. So for example, in this particular case, there were many different responses, but I only restricted to two responses, whether they have osteoarthritis or not, or whether they're not applicable or not. All the other responses, like whether they have rheumatoid arthritis, whether they have other kind of arthritis or uh, refused, not available or whatever responses, I am just deleting those using this subset command, correct? But if I'm doing that, I'm committing a crime in the survey data analysis. What crime is that? Then, I am distorting the weights in such a way that all of the strata and cluster information will not be available anymore, right? So the weights that I get eventually, and if I try to use the strata and cluster information to get my um, um, correct standard error, that will not work. So how, to, how do we get around that? So the way we do it is that we just record the data set. Instead of subsetting, see, all of these are commented out. Instead of subsetting, I am just recording the data set to only osteoarthritis and not applicable. And I'm saying whatever else response I have, those should be not available values, right? So I am essentially saying whatever response is not relevant to my question, those are not available. But see the difference that I'm in approach. In here, I'm just saying that everything else is not available, but in here I was deleting. Deleting is not permitted. If you have not missing data, just keep those missing data as missing data, that's fine. The irre irrelevant data is missing data, that's fine. But you are not supposed to delete your subjects. And how does that really help us? Because we are not going to use the missing values. So for example, if you are not going to use the imputation methods, then some of these uh, miss rows with missing values are not going to be helpful anymore, right? So in that case, what I have done is that, sorry, I have to again go back to the original. Um, what I have done is that I have created two copies of the data. The first copy of the data is the entire data without any uh, without deleting any subjects. So I name them, yeah, in here. So see, this analytic one data set was the one where I had the 
original data set. I did not delete anything, but whatever was not relevant to me, I just assigned missing there. And I, I named this as analytic miss. And then I, I commit a crime. I say that um, create a complete case data for me and that I named that as analytic two. So analytic miss is the original data set with missing values and analytic two is the data set without any missing value. Essentially this is a complete case, right? So now I have one copy of the data without any deletion and another copy of the data with the complete case. What I can do now is that I can, based on the ID of those two data sets, I can try to identify, I can create a new variable, analytic data miss, and I can try to identify, I'm using this percent in percent. You are familiar with this command, right? So whoever the IDs that are associated in here, um, if they are also including included in here, those will be included as zero. So those uh, that are not associated with any missing values, they, they will be associated with a zero value. For those who are associated with any missing value, they will be uh, associated with a one value, right? So let, let me show you what is the implication. So this is the original missing, original data with missing value. And this, this has everybody, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is the complete case analysis where I do not have one, two, I do not have four, I do not have six, right? And then um, I only create the, uh, miss, the miss variable depending on whether they have any missing values in their rows or not. And then when I create the design, so this is the original design. So this is a CCHS dataset, so I'm just going to use the uh, weight variable here to create my design. I, I define what is my data set. See, this is not the complete case data. This is the original data with all, everything. And I also have, I define cluster equals to uh, one because I do not have any cluster information. And this gives me certain amount of weight. And then after I create the design with the weights, then what I say that if a person is not associated with missing value, then subset, then subset the design, not the data set. See the distinction? I'm not subsetting the analytic miss. I'm subsetting the design. And what it does is that it preserves the information, the original information of the weights and the strata and whatever information that I have provided. And that should be the way to, uh, to delete some of the observations in a survey data analysis. So going back to your original question, say for example, if you are restricting your age to 18 only, 18 plus only, so you are essentially deleting the subjects who are less than 18 years of age. So in that case, you are allowed to delete, but you are allowed to delete within your design after you have created your design. What you are not allowed is deleting the subjects from your analytic data set when you are creating them. Remember one of the things I was constantly saying to you all the time, save your code, right? Changing your subset command to the record command is just one code, one line away. It is not a big deal. But if you are not saving your code, <laughs> then God help you what will happen because every time you, you do some new, learn some new analysis in this class, you will try to include, say, include them in your analysis and then you have to make some modification. So saving your reproducible code I cannot say this enough, this is very important, right? So making these changes is just one line thing. It's not going to be a big deal. Sorry, that was a kind of long answer to your question, but I think it was necessary to explain why that was happening.